All right, let's see the real scale example now. So we're gonna solve the sentiment analysis problem with both embedding and bag of words, starting with embedding technique. The example is now taken from Kaggle. These are Amazon reviews that are labeled either one or two, and we'll see in a second. And the format is fast text format. Essentially, it has underline, underline, label, underline, underline, one or two. So you can download them here. Train and test files are separate. You need to unzip them. And just uh, one quick note here. You see that this data directory, I am passing the full path. Sometimes you could replace this with a tilde, but sometimes it doesn't work. It depends on your system, Windows, Mac, the current working directory you're in, and all that mess that you might need to switch from tilde to this complete path. Now, looking at the data, you see that train data has 3 million and 6 hundred thousand examples this is real scale this is huge actually this is this is not gonna happen in like small companies or mid-sized companies i would say but anyways we have each line we have the label and then the sentence itself an absolute masterpiece i'm quite sure any of you are actually taking the time and so this is positive to label to buyer beware. This is a self-published book. And if you want to know why and so on. So this is a negative sentiment. Quite frankly, 3 million and 600,000 is beyond the limits of my MacBook. Actually, let's check my MacBook just for you guys to know. It's uh, about two and a half years old, I guess, or maybe more. It has 16 gigs of memory, which is, I guess, pretty standard for our use cases. I would pass on the training set, although I could technically go and rent one machine on one of those cloud services, Google or Amazon or Microsoft or any other ones, and then run this. But uh, for my example here, I would stick to the test data and I will run, I will split this for training, testing, validation. I'll not do any validation, but essentially you get the idea. So you can do all of that on this because it has already 400,000. But remember always, if the data is too large, sometimes beyond some point, it doesn't matter. It doesn't give you that much of performance. So you could always do sampling to reduce the data size and just get enough of data to train a good model. In our case, I just stick to test data because it's already a kind of a sample, smaller sample of training data we want. This test data is separate from that train data here, but what I'm trying to say is that this is already a labeled set, so I can just use it and split it as train test and so on. So I'll have a normalized function as before. I'll do the normalizations and add some columns. Again, I'm trying to check the, distrib the distribution of labels. You see that they're almost the same. So this is the test data. So, and I do the train test split. Again, 35% I put aside for test portion and the rest for train portion. So essentially we have 260,000 training rows and 140,000 test rows. Save those to a file on this and then I take the paths. This is the print result that I stole from Fastex GitHub. So now I run train supervised using fast text and my dimension is going to be 200.9 and so on. You could you could check the and loss function is negative sampling. Once I run it, I as you see, I get precision 0.9 on train and precision about 0.9 again on test. This is not overfitting. This is good. I might get better results if I change the params here increasing the epoch from 2 to 5. As you see since I'm increasing the epoch, I am going to overfit a little bit now there is a little bit of gap between the train and test precision at one i try transfer learning again that this file that i'm using here the the embedding vectors are coming from fastex website you can check it here there are a bunch of them i use actually let me show you uh, i'm using this little one here so it's trained on wikipedia 2017 and then one news data set so i have downloaded that again i'm passing uh, let me actually check so in here um, you probably know that 
if the file is too large it's one million words and it's too heavy to read all of that into memory so I'm just looking at the first few rows in here I'm just looking at the first hundred rows the first row actually is telling you how many words are in this file how many lines are in this file and what's the dimension of each vector and then the rest would be just uh, the first thing would be the word and the, the rest of the line would be coordinates of that 300 dimension vector so as you see punk changes are still in, in this data set even you will see later the case is kept as is so comma the 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 vector for the is this and this is this should be 300 dimension dot and and so on to and these are all stop words and again it means that stop words are not removed even parenthesis is and so on and and they are sorted i think if i remember correctly these are sorted based on the maximum frequency this and so on so now if I do transfer learning I decrease the learning rate because otherwise it will quickly overfit also I decrease the epoch but I had to increase dimension from 200 to 300 to match the dimension of these vectors here everything else is the same and the pre-trained vectors now is uh, referencing to this file that I have downloaded. So I get the same precision 91.91 on train and 0.89 on test. It is a, a bit overfitting but looks fine to me. I'm running more iterations to see if I can get better results. I'm changing the parameters. Uh, this one to me this is a bit overfitting 92 5896 in in our example here i consider that overfitting i would stick to this so this is about 90.9 this is about 0.91 and these are the parameters so yeah i'll stick to this one this is good for our first iteration i would call it now let's remove punctuations and see what happens the only thing that is different here changing the normalized function and removing remove punctuations from it everything else is the same i'm just repeating stuff as i said these are these are notebooks you guys are probably familiar with that we're not following all the best you know refactoring and all that good namings all that uh, maybe at the end at some point that we get to a good solution we might do that so doing the train test split saving that to file i'm just changing the name of the file underline punk at the end now i do the fast text again 0 0.9 0 0.89 you see here um the time that is showing here it, it's saying eight minutes and four seconds while or overall eight minutes eight seconds while the wall time is one minute and 18 seconds that's because there are things that are running in parallel so in if things were put serially rather than in parallel, you would experience eight minutes and eight seconds. So this is giving us almost the same results. You could do further grid search on this. I'm skipping that. I'm just gonna try bag of words as the next iteration. Again, everything is similar to before. I start with parameters that we had from our bag of words example. The only thing I might have set differently is the number of maximum features. I'm setting it to 50,000. Essentially, it means that take 50,000 tokens only. I'm trying to test play it as before, setting the, the, the same random state to make sure that everything else is the same as the above iterations. Now I fed it and then I measure the model. You can see that. This is, this is the train metrics and these are the test metrics. The precision is now 0.93 for train and 0.92 for test. So essentially I would say this is a good solution and it's better than the embedding one. Remember we had a better solution for the previous problem with our embedding approach, but now we have a better solution with our bag of words. So I'm going to go with this solution as my overall first iteration. These are kind of three 
three separate iterations but let's let's say i did it in, in a sprint i will go with this solution and then later i'll try other things one thing that i would try next is that this is not lowercase this is this has the original case for each word so essentially i would say for my next iteration i would not because in my normalized function i am lowercasing everything so in my next iteration i will try fast text transfer learning without norm uh, without lowercasing my text and see if i can get better results and essentially do more grid search Wikipedia, you see W starts with uh, capital W. All right, let's now move on to our notes. We have some final tips for you guys. So as I said before, start simple and then do iterations on your models. This is the best approach, I would say. And there are some challenges in uh, real projects real examples all the time I, I have come across some of them i could mention some of them and some advices on those the first thing is that there is always good enough solution versus best solution best solution you could see those on kaggle competitions or other websites or some papers but they take a lot of computational resources time and so on but in practice we don't need those we need good enough to also accommodate the timeline of shipping the model make sure that um, our customers have enough experience with that and give us some feedback or you know there are a lot of things around it so you want to go with some good enough model and then iterate over that the second problem i would say is not having enough training data this is very common and there are actually some articles on the web that people are trying to explain how to overcome that but this is a real problem so in nlp case one way of getting more data or essentially trying to increase the size of your data is doing augmentation some call it test time augmentation but i would say for train time as well it, it works tta and that is uh, for each document that you have you could translate it to another language let's say french and then translate it back to english so in this case let's say you have this sentence he is a nice guy and then you translate it to french and then you translate it back to english then you get he is a gentleman so the same sentence but is now it has a, some different words in it so you could assign the same label for that when you're trained and uh, this way you could see that you are almost doubling but sometimes it's, it's essentially when you translate back you get the same sentence but sometimes you get a different sentence and you are increasing the size of your training you could do the same thing when you test your data so and then do a voting because when you do this on your test you're not looking at the label you have to run your document through your model to, to see what label it's going to be predicted for that and then use the prediction for different versions of that text that you had the, the original one and the ones that are coming from the translation to kind of having a voting system to decide uh, what label it belongs to essentially you could use other languages for you know as the middle language for translation like german as well and uh, there are packages for translation i think google has one google translate package that you could use this is this technique actually is not necessarily for when you have lack of data i would say essentially you could use this tta technique for generally your one of your iterations and see if you get any improvements sometimes it results in improvements this augmentation is usually used in image classifiers segmentations and all those uh, image related models they do rotations they do cropping 
those are all called augmentations. And then uh, when they do testing on their example, they run it through those augmented versions and then do a voting or averaging of the predictions. The other challenge in uh, real world problems is skewness of data. So in our case, labels were balanced. They had the same distribution. But I would say this is not the case all the time. Let's say you have uh, some, let's say spam, spam filtering based on the content of the email. Spams are maybe 1% of the total number of emails or maybe less than that. And this will require you to make sure that you go and definitely always I recommend you check the confusion matrix and to also make sure that your metrics are defined in a way that maybe AUCRC is not a good, good one to go with. You should throw that away and then uh, look at different metrics if you want to go with the original distribution. Otherwise, you might want to do some downsampling or oversampling to kind of uh, mitigate this skewness. Another challenge is normalization of the text. So depending on the source of your text, your problem has its own flavor and your text is coming from different sources. You could have Twitter's text, or you could have SMS textual data, or you could have news text, or different sources. And then based on that, you might need to be a little bit innovative in the sense that how to normalize your data. Sometimes, let's say in Twitter, you have abbreviations, hashtags, you have to see if you want to remove those, or you want to expand, like have a hash table to translate abbreviations to the original words or no you want to maybe that's that's too hard to go with so you might want to just stick with the, the original text and just do character level engrams like the ones we do in fast text to remind you you can do character level engrams in back words as well so and like in text you might see a lot of smileys so there are dictionaries online if you search there are dictionaries to translate smileys to text. You could use that, or you could directly just have your smileys as tokens. One other challenge is having other languages mixed with the original language. Let's say if you're dealing with English language, you might sometimes notice that some documents have uh, some other languages, words, or sometimes some, yeah, maybe less than 1% of the documents are coming from another language. Again, this is something to be aware of. You can always translate or remove them, or you could just work with them. That's fine, as long as your metrics are good enough. I mentioned about the metrics. Oh, one thing about the other languages I said here, one other challenge is that sometimes people by mistake, maybe a cat walks on their keyboard, or maybe they by mistake put some weird characters and it's always a good idea to look into those texts and see what's going on and to escape those special characters. It's really rare but it happens in large corpuses. Another challenge is to deploy your model to production. There are a variety of ways and nowadays if you're in in a big company, you could always hand it over to, you know, engineering teams and they'll take care of it. Probably maybe they will ask you some questions about the metadata, some dependencies, but in general, they should be able to take care of that. But this is not the case in mid-size or small companies or, you know, if you have your own toy project. There are solutions right now that people are using one of them is flask rest api in python the other one is mleap this is used actually i have used this for spark models there are other all-in-one solutions provided by those cloud providers so like SageMaker or the one that google provided i forgot its name there are a bunch of them actually this is one of them but i just want to say th those are not the only solutions all right as always this is the famous code all models are wrong, some are useful. So don't worry about your model not being the perfect model. So you just go with the good enough one and then iterate on that. And sometimes this, the, the nature of your problem requires that you update your train model over time, like maybe every day or maybe every week. You might want to take the most recent training data and train on that. This is something that is not only true for NLP, it's, all this, it's also true for other conventional machine learning models. I hope you enjoyed this NLP series. Please follow us on Twitter, DS by Hadi, and subscribe to this channel. 
and please feel free to leave your comments down below.